Hey there, Angry Faithful. I just wanted to drop in, bend your ear a little bit, get your attention. So if you're not listening, drop what you're doing and pay attention to me. Because I'm here to inform you that not only can you get your daily, maybe if you're binging it, I'm not sure, that's entirely up to you, but you can multiply your doses of angry me fuckery by paying attention to all of the platforms upon which you can find either the dulcet tones of my voice and David's voice or my pretty face and David's not-so-pretty face. Anyways, digressing. We, not only on we are on YouTube, we are on Spotify, we're on Rumble, we're on Google, Apple Podcast. We have a TikTok page. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Facebook. So if you find yourself fuckery deprived, curl up with a nice hot mug of shut the fuck up and just listen, open those ear holes and be prepared to be cream pied like it's the first time. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Welcome, Angry Faith, today on Psychos and Sociopaths. This is going to be a weird episode. We're going to go over three things in the news that is uh, about murder uh, that we found out. Uh, we didn't, it's one of, it, they're short ones, but they're, they're interesting cases nonetheless. Our first one's going to be Alex uh, Ewing. 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 Oh, okay. In dyslexia. Yeah, Alex Ewing, guilty of killing Patricia Smith in early 1984. The result of the trial following Ewing's conviction in two, uh, August of 21 for killing three members of the Bennett family with a hammer less than a week after the Smith slaying finally closes the book on cold cases that lingered for nearly four decades. Now, now uh, uh, according to westward.com, uh, Westward included the Bear, uh, Bennett tragedy in a 2013 roundup of cold cases published on the National Day of Remembrance for murder victims. The account of this ca- the case shared on the family uh, families of homicide victims and missing persons website noted that Bruce Bennett had married his wife Deborah before joining the Navy, where he served at Pearl Harbor between 76 and 80 as a sonar now, uh, a- analyst. Now, upon completion of the service commitment. The couple moved to Aurora, uh, being Colorado. Um, There, Bruce worked at a family-owned furniture store and helped Deborah raise their two daughters. Now, they led a very quiet life, but isn't that normally the case? Um, And Constance uh, Constance Bennett, Bruce's mother, they worked hard and stayed home at night. She added that Bruce had enrolled in a local college where he trained to be an air traffic controller with an eye toward landing a job at an airport in the area. Now, these dreams came to a shattering end on January 15th of 1984 between midnight and 6 a.m. An intruder entered the Bennett home, according to uh, Marvin Brandt, an Aurora police homicide detective who investigated the case up until his retirement in 2002. It was a blitz attack for no reason. Investigators believed Bruce confronted an attacker on the stairs. Deep gashes were later found on his arms and body and blood was found up and down the staircase. The following uh, morning, Deborah's body was discovered in her bedroom while seven-year-old Melissa was found in her bed. The younger daughter, Vanessa, then age three, was in bed when her grandmother came to the house and discovered the carnage. She, uh, she survived the attack despite having a shattered jaw and pelvis, among other horrific injuries. She had been sexually assaulted, as had Melissa. More than 500 people were questioned during the initial phase of the investigation into the Bennett family killings, and while no arrests were made, detectives never stopped looking for the person responsible. In 2002, the Aurora Police Department even obtained an arrest of warrant for the still unknown killer based on DNA, a first in the state of Colorado. Then in 2010, there was a new twist. Aurora police announced a DNA link between the Bennett slings and the murder day, murder days earlier of Patricia Smith, a 50 year old from Lakewood, whom authorities described as an outgoing, friendly, sophisticated woman who had recently started her own interior decorating business. The homicide took place between the hours of 1 PM and 3 PM on January 10th, 1984 in unit five of an apartment complex located at 12610 West 
Bayard Avenue. Smith, too, was beaten to death with a hammer and sexually assaulted. Six years later, in 2016, the APD used aged progressed DNA uh, phenotyping, a a technique developed by uh, Parabon Nanolabs and dubbed Snapshot. Okay. Um, To try to move the investigation forward. Now, the result was a pair of images, one a likeness of a possible suspect at the time of the Bennett slaying, and a second aged aged to approximate approximate rather his appearance in 2016 neither of those illustrations bore more than a slight resemblance to ewing after the flurry of activity spurred by the snapshot pics quieted down the bennett case slid from the headlines again but in august 2018 local authorities revealed that ewing's dna which had been sampled after his arrest and conviction for brutally beating a couple in nevada with an axe handle scored a hit on the combined dna index or codis uh, database used by law enforcement uh, nationwide. Now, at the time, Ewing was only three years from becoming parole eligible in Nevada. Now, because the Bennett and Smith murders took place in different jurisdictions, prosecutions for each moved forward on separate tracks, and the COVID-19 pandemic <clears throat> slowed the process for both. See what I did there? Yeah. Um, but in August 2021, a jury... In Arapahoe County District Court found Ewing guilty of killing Bruce, Deborah, and Melissa Bennett. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years for each crime to be served consecutively to his prison term in Nevada and to each other. The Smith case proved bumpier. Last October, a Jefferson County court judge declared a mistrial after granting a defense uh, request for Ewing to undergo a competency evaluation. He passed that test, leading to the launch of a second trial that concluded yesterday with guilty verdicts for first-degree murder. After deliberation, felony murder involving a robbery and felony murder involving a sexual assault. Afterward, First Judicial Judge D.A. Alexis King, whose office prosecuted Ewing, issued the following statement. We truly appreciate the jury's service in this difficult case. And our thoughts are with the family of Patricia Smith as they finally see justice for her horrific murder over three decades ago. Today's verdict is the result of significant efforts and dedication by law enforcement, scientists, and witnesses who testified, and our staff, without whom this outcome would not have been possible. Sentencing is set, well, was set for 10 a.m. on April 12th. He got the max amount. Uh, And the next one is from my sister. Uh, I've been wanting to go over this case. It's kind of a a weird case. I just totally forgot about it. And then I knew we were going to do something like this. Uh, We got the Riverdale actor, Ryan uh, Grantham, gets life imprisonment for killing his mother. Uh, Canadian actor, Ryan uh, Grantham, uh, Grant Ham, uh has been sentenced to life in prison, uh, imprisonment after pleading guilty to the murders of his mother, Barbara uh, Waite, in 2020. Uh, the 24-year-old uh, who played Jeffrey Augustine uh, in teen drama uh, Riverdale was sentenced to British Columbia Supreme Court in Vancouver on Wednesday. Uh, well, this is like uh, 2020. Uh, and this is read from when we look at stuff. Oh. But anyways, uh I'm, I'm reading this. This is Yeah, yeah. Hard. It's fucked up. Uh he pleaded to get to second degree murder after having an initiated been charged with first degree murder. Prosecutors said he uh had also plot to kill the Canadian uh Prime Minister Justin uh Trudeau. Trudeau. Uh, Trudeau. 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 Grandma admitted to shooting his mother in the back of the head as she played piano uh, in in their home north of Vancouver. The courts heard uh, in a video, and he actually took a video. Uh, you can't see it or anything like that. Uh, in the video, took an, uh, on his uh, video Go, GoPro. Uh, camera after the killing the actor filmed his mother's body a uh, body 
while saying, I shot her in the back of the head in the moments after she would uh, have known it was me. After drinking beer and smoking marijuana for hours following the murder, he uh, packed a car with three guns, ammunition, and tw- uh, 12 Molotov cocktails. He was really going for this motherfucker. He had made, uh, as well as camping supplies and directions to Mr. Tr- uh, Trudeau uh, Cottage residence. He drove roughly 200 kilometers. I, I don't know the American shit. Uh, for that, it's probably what, like uh, 150 miles. Uh, 130, something like that. Yeah. Uh, east of the town of Hope before turning around and driving to uh, to Vancouver police station where he told the officer, I killed my mother. The court also heard uh, Granham had considered committing uh, an act of mass violence at Vancouver's Lion Gate Bridge or... Uh, Simon uh, Fraser's university where he had been a student uh, in row before turning his car around and handling uh, himself in F- uh, former child actor Granham appeared in one episode. He only played one episode in Riverdale and he's like, Oh, Riverdale, blah, blah, blah. He was also featured Riverdale. in supernatural. And and he, he was in supernatural. Him. He went, he, he also starred in diary of a wimpy kid. Yeah. But they went with the Riverdale one because I guess that's more current. That's, that's what everybody is going to know right now. Yeah, right. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, it's he's in. He was in Riverdale. Oh my god, and he was only no. in it for fucking one episode. He, he was. He was a, a walk on role. No he, speaking. He, he was. Pro- he was probably. He was probably like in the back. Back. He was, he was that back. actor that goes. I'm getting my big break, mom. What? Well, what's your role? I get to play corpse number two in an episode of CSI. <laughs> <laughs> but they keep the sheet over him so you don't actually see it's him <laughs> right. yeah uh, right. so you see my hand move that was me <laughs> fucking hell if you look real close you can see me breathing <laughs> it was an episode uh, about zombies I swear <laughs> that, was, that was my motivation <laughs> Uh, Gratham has been in custody for the past two and a half years. Law enforcement officials in Vancouver told De- uh, Deadline the Deadline that's actually oh, well, okay, Deadline. Okay, I get it now. It has been participating in a mental health program since his arrest. During the trial, his lawyer argued he had been struggling with anxiety and critical depression and had expressed a desire to kill himself and harm others in months uh, leading up the investigation. He will not be eligible for parole for another 14 years after his sentence. That's such a cop-out, though. Like, who oh. isn't suffering from anxiety and clinical depression now, especially after, like you said, the pandemic, the last two years have fucked everybody up? Like, come on. Oh, yeah. I, I, I did it, like, I, every time I woke up, I was like... Guns right there. Can I have to say it like that's, and then oh well, it's, you know, excuse him. He had a, he had very good reasons for doing what he did. He was sad. Fuck you, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, everybody. Okay, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have chats up that. That so we can go back and forth, <laughs> and Johnny just is like like the fact that Dave wear, uh, wears a uh, skirt underneath his desk. Right. So we were talking about the cop out, and I was like, like the fact that David wears a skirt under his desk. I, it's, it's <laughs> God damn it! You watch the fucking video. I had to stand up to show that I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> Fucking Johnny. It's a, it's a skirt. It's a skirt. It's a skirt. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> it's a bloody oh. skirt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anyways, go ahead and do the uh, the last one, uh, Chris. Uh, the, and, and this one is just recently. It just happened yesterday. And it's going to get Johnny into a political bind and we might go a little bit over because of that. This, uh, so this was uh, out of McHenry, North Dakota. 
North Dakota man is facing multiple charges after a hit and run that killed an 18 year old man. The suspect reportedly told deputies he hit the man with his car because the two had a political argument. Foster County deputies were called to a hit and run that happened in an alleyway in McHenry, North Dakota. Crash killed an 18 year old man from Gray City identified as Kaylor Ellinson. Uh, court documents say 41 year old Shannon Brandt called 911 at 2.35 a.m. Sunday to report that he had hit a pedestrian because he was threatening him. Brandt told State Radio that the pedestrian was part of a Republican extremist group and that he was afraid they were, quote, coming to get him. After visiting the crash site, deputies went to Brandt's house in Glenfield about 12 minutes from the scene, KBLY reports. Brandt allegedly admitted to deputies he had consumed alcohol before the incident and stated he hit Ellingson with his car because he had a political argument with him. Brandt also alleg allegedly admitted that he initially left the crash scene, returned to call 911, then left again before deputies could arrive. Is that two separate counts, right? Uh, should uh, it so. should be two separate counts. The counts yeah. would be uh, hit and run and uh, running, uh, running away from an accident, yeah, leaving the scene of an accident. Court documents said just before the crash, Ellingson called his mom and asked if they knew who Brandt was. She said yes and told her son she was on her way to pick him up. A short time later, court documents say Ellingson called his mom again to say that he or they were chasing him. It was after that second call that the 18-year-old could not be reached again. Ellingson was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Brandt has been charged with criminal vehicular homicide and driving while intoxicated. Court records show a judge set bail at on fifty thousand fucking, fucking dollars. Yeah. Over a political argument and he left the scene of the accident twice and was drunk. And he's out on fifty thousand dollars bail. Yeah. See, okay. Well, the whole All thing, right. the 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 skinny on this though, uh, before we get Johnny started, we will get his re uh engines revved up a little bit more. Uh <laughs> Yeah, it was a Trump. Uh, what the guy actually said, well, what this article didn't uh, put in there, was the basic fact of it was a Trump bumper sticker that the guy that was having an argument and he, he was a liberal Democrat, and and this is the guy that was drunk and ended up killing the kid. Forty-one year old, yeah, yeah, the, the eighteen-year-old, grown ass man, the forty-year-old, one-year-old. Uh, ended up getting in the argument, killing this kid because he was a Trump supporter. And and, and we went over I, – I've, I've gone over like three different fucking things. Uh, this is actually the nicest one. And because of the, the, the reports, uh, it was actually in the area. They didn't give it up what kind of uh, thing was. Is the 40-year-old, 1-year-old believed that it was a right-wing extremist that he was going after – and he was saving people's lives because, hey, what just happened just recently? Didn't Joe Biden said the the anybody that's right wing that's that was that was mega extremists were a threat to our democracy? Is it? Is it? I mean, I I, I can yeah, honestly this happened, like Johnny, within, Johnny's revving up. Johnny's revving. Yeah, up. what was it like two weeks before he had this speech, and then this guy goes. And kills a dude. I, I knew. I knew this he was gonna believed. happen. He didn't even have any proof other than a bumper sticker. He yes. just said, "I believed he was part of a, 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 a Republican extremist group." Couldn't tell you which one. Yeah, but I just believed that he was an extremist, and then we argued. So yeah, I killed him. We need to come to the realization and identify liberalism, progressivism, and statism as a mental disorder in this country. It is not one that can be treated with medication, but it rather needs to be treated mostly, and I hate to say this, but with compassion. Because these people, left to their own devices, will end up eating their own. I saw a TikTok yesterday of libs eating libs in the Portland area. A white woman who was Karen, a Karen accosting a Native American man, 
and he was giving her the you know giving her the business too she was telling him to get in his car and get the fuck out of out of the way and he was like why you got to bring race into it and she you know he's like you you know and it's funny watching liberals go off on liberals because either you're an extremist you're a racist or you're pulling a colonial mindset and pulling it in it's just all these isms that they just want to pull into their universe to to make them feel them themselves feel vindicated and justified for their actions when in fact truth be told nine times out of ten a majority of the problems that we have as a society in this country nowadays could have been solved years ago with a firm steady hand and a good old-fashioned belt across both ass cheeks You want to take this all the way back to the destruction of the family unit when Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the the, the Welfare Act into play. He was quoted on tape in the Oval Office as saying, we're going to get those people to vote for us for the next 200 years. All you did by creating handouts and a cradle-to-grave mentality, a a womb-to-the-tomb mentality, and, you know, is that you're going to create an underclass of voters who are dependent upon the government for everything in life. And that is because you de-incentivize ingenuity. You de-incentivize entrepreneurialism. You de-incentivize the family unit. And now I'm talking about the traditional definition, a man, a woman, two and a half kids, and a white picket fence. Okay? It could be any color picket fence. If you want to pull color into it, fine. Make it fucking purple. I don't care. The point is, is that you've got, just like with with uh, Barack uh, Obama setting race relations in this country back 50 years, Joe Biden is further creating this divide. Okay, I'm not saying that Donald Trump was the best president that we'll have ever seen in our country and, in, and most likely in our lives. That, that was reserved for Ronaldus Magnus, okay? All right. Ronald Reagan himself said that socialism will will infiltrate its way into a, into the American uh, mindset and into the American institutions under a different name, whether it be progressive, progressivism or liberalism. It is the same sheep wearing or same wolf wearing or wearing the same wolf's or you know what I'm trying to say the same wolf trying to wear the same sheep's clothing. Thank you very much. Okay, but then you get. Joe Biden in a very Hitler-esque speech with the red background using United States Marines as props, talking about extremisms, MAGA Republicans being right-wing extremists and being a threat to democracy and and the national security. That is the single-handed most divisive speech that I have ever heard and a a sitting American president mumble his way through. Okay. And I'm willing to bet, David, you might want to grab one of those tinfoil hats and put it on because I'm willing to bet that it was most likely a body double because they were afraid the real Joe Biden was going to start shaking hands with people who weren't fucking there. And then he was going to wander off. And then we were going to have to put out a nationwide silver alert because the president seemed to have gotten himself lost between the Rose Garden and his third shitter. (laughs) This man is rife with dementia. He is rife with Alzheimer's. And he is rife with the vitriol, the hate, the discourse, the division that that, that makes up the entirety of his party. What I cannot stand is the fact that these 1960s and 1970s radical retreads who have failed to get what they wanted done during the Vietnam War have seemingly taken on a different approach. They've infiltrated academia, they've become professors, and they, and they indoctrinate the, the youth of this country who have no other frame of reference because why, again, the family unit has failed. Okay, you didn't have a mother and a father who taught their kids the right way to approach a a decision. It's not what's popular. The right choice is almost never popular. The right choice is always a hard one to make. But and just like I've gone over many, many, many times with David on this show, if you are going to have 
an opinion, by God, take the time to make a well-informed um, opinion because you should spend the majority of your life with your mouth closed and, and, and not give people the opportunity to think that you're an idiot. But yet we have thousands, millions of 18 to 25 year olds running around this country, opening their mouths and removing any and all doubt. They've occupied spaces in Seattle. They've taken over Portland. They're occupying the capital of our great state. And it's like, it's mind blowing to think that here we are in not only the middle of the Bible Belt, but we are in the great state of Texas in the United States of America. And we've got college students marching down 6th Street with a Soviet sickle and hammer flag talking about how great communism and socialism are and that capitalism and the free market and democracy are going to be the downfall of mankind. Like, are you fucking kidding me yeah. right now? Because uh, yeah, they it has that. never worked over the course of anything. It, it, you, you look at any one part of, of human history from the beginning of time till today, socialism has never worked. It well, has never here, here, worked. here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? Uh, on, on something like that, I, I have like several people, uh, one of my friend that owns actual business, one of my friends that owns a business and he, he's, uh, he's very democratic and everything like that. He goes on the, the left so stupidly, uh, and he's running a business and he was like, man, we, we need the government to give us free medical. We need the government to give us free stuff and do free this. And I was like, listen, you're running a business. If your business goes under, uh, the, who's who's going to be out of the money and everything like that? Well, it's just going to be me right now. Okay, if, if you own this business and you actually started having employees and everything like that, uh -huh. and at no point in time did you actually you know come up with a plan to uh, basically make a newer product so you, you can keep you know escalating or keep up with your storage with basically your your production and everything like that and and then everything just goes out everybody has basically are you going to be rich or are you going to keep on paying these people with the actual dividends that you actually had as a profit he's like well i'll probably give them the money because i was like that's stupid you want to know the, you're, the you're, best you're, question that i've ever asked a liberal is is that have you ever had a poor person sign your paycheck and exactly. the answer 100% every time has always been no. Yeah. And the reason why we don't have poor people signing our paychecks is because they're exactly that. They are poor. Who do you think pays the <laughs> pays the wages of the people who buy, who build your super yachts, who cooks your dinner in your five-star restaurants? Rich people. We need rich people just like we need poor people. I mean, I, I wish that we had a magic wand that we could level everything off and we could redistribute the wealth without actually taking from the rich. But the problem with that is, is that it's a utopian idea. And we've tried utopia back in the 1600s, I think it was, and it didn't work. It failed miserably because why we inherently as human beings always look for an edge over somebody else. We are naturally competitive and, and power seeking animals. I mean, it. And, and to be completely fair, it doesn't just stop and, and, and begin with the human race. Every species that walks, crawls, slithers, and flies on this great planet of ours has a hierarchy. And it doesn't matter how simple it is. But we also have, we also have points to where uh, there, there's certain literature nowadays that is getting, like, banned like Animal Farm. Animal Farm is a great book to read. Yeah, Animal Farm, 1984. 1984. Yes. It's hilarious to me. Yeah. You know, and, and, and here's why. Because, you know, they want to talk about whitewashing history. And, and, but yet, we're the fascists because somehow we're, we're, we're the evil conservatives, right? Well, you look up the term definition, uh, the uh, look up the definition for the term fascism. And it outlines everything that they're doing. They use fear yeah. tactics, physical, legal means. I mean, they squash the opposition and they try to censor thought. 
And, and they're trying to get it to where, it, and and I hate to freaking beat this like it's being beat like a dead horse, but they're trying to take away the 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 way that we could actually fight them back. And it, yeah. and it, it all goes to them trying to institutionalize their uh, their breaching of the constitutional firewalls. Yes, you and, know, and literally and, they, they're literally saying on live TV that. We're trying to get around this stuff. Yeah. Uh, it, there are college students on TikTok that are screaming, burn the Constitution. The Constitution is a failed document. It's because the Constitution stands in their way and prevents them from doing exactly what they want to do. Yeah. That's yeah. the only thing that's keeping them in check right now. I remember listening to Mark Levin, uh, Mark Levin and he was talking about um, – the uh, Rules for Radicals, it's a book mm-hmm. written by Saul Alinsky. Yep. I have not purchased a copy of this book. I won't even so much as go to the library and, and check it out because I don't want to give this guy's estate any royalties. That's the right word. But there was a, an instance back in the 70s, I believe, when George Herbert uh, Bush, George H., George 41., was the uh, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. And it was during the Vietnam War. And he was scheduled to give a speech in front of the General Assembly. Well, you got all these anti-war protesters out there picketing and everything like that, and envoys and diplomats and, and, and representatives from the different countries are just walking through their picket lines and not paying them any attention. Um, Saul Alinsky comes up. And he said, uh, you guys trying to protest? And they're like, yeah, you know, like, fuck the war, blah, blah, blah. He says, well, you're going about it all wrong. He says, "Uh, what I need you to do is dress up like Klansmen and go sit in the gallery uh, or the galley up top that overlooks the, the, the assembly floor. And every time Bush stands up and says anything about the war in Vietnam, you get up and cheer. And that's what they did. And it ultimately turned the the international opinion about the United States operations in South Southwest Asia or Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia, um, into an issue about race um, and, and an issue about imperialism, as opposed to us enforcing the doctrine about fighting communism in our hemisphere. Exactly. And it did more to damage the international uh, support for the for the U.S. war in Vietnam than anything else. I mean, more than the Kent State shootings, uh, more than the March on Washington, more than anything that these you know beatniks. I mean, even even more than Woodstock would have even hoped to have imagined. Mm-hmm. And it ultimately, the Democrat constituents started talking to their Democrat senators and representatives in Washington. And they started turning the tide against the United States. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that the you know the 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 domain of of the the twenty four hour news cycle is never going to go away. You know that we as a species, even more nowadays, being connected by the internet, have an insatiable desire for information. Well, the problem is it's no longer information; it's entertainment. Right, it is. Yeah, it's even, entertainment. Even Fox News, but. Even Fox News too. says on like Tucker Carlson was in the the congressional uh, hearing and everything. We're, we're we are not here to give you news. We're here to entertain you. Yeah, and see, and that's I miss the days when the news was news, right? Yes. And during World War II, there was a, a Navy admiral who was being interviewed by reporters, and he said they were asking him what his thoughts on press reporting on the war was. He said the press. What about them? Tell them that there was a war after we've already won it. Yeah. 
you know, and, and, and the reason why that is, is it's not to give the military free reign and, and, and to, to, to do whatever they want, because there has to be some kind of checks and balances there, obviously. But if you give the information, there is such a thing as too much information. Yeah. You give the general public information that they're not ready to digest. And they're going to they're going to lose their minds. Case in point, Tommy Lee Jones stated it very eloquently in the first Men in Black movie. He says men are dumb animals. You know, humans are dumb animals. Dumb panicky animals. Dumb panic, dumb panicky animals. And like we're as a society, and I'm talking about globally, we're not ready for the idea that there's life on other planets and that they've been visiting us for decades. We're not ready for that. If a UFO today were to land itself in the Rose Garden outside the White House, people would lose their shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's funny because I'm sitting here and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading articles about uh, the Artemis project uh, that NASA's, you know, putting on to try to get us back to the moon. Talking about Elon Musk is is ramping up his his efforts to try to get somebody to Mars. There's still people out there that believe that the Earth A is flat. That B, we've never been to space, and C, that San, Stanley Kubrick somehow filmed the fake moon landings. And I'm like, how how is it that somebody can just exist on that plane, knowing that there's all of this information out there? You know, like they 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 asked a flat earther one day if the Earth is flat, how do you explain the other planets in the solar system being so, in the solar no, system? No, it, it was it was Mars. No, they, no, 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 no. They they were talking about all the planets, the other planets in the solar oh, okay, system. Okay, 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 okay. They were all sphere or spherical planets. Earth is the only one that is flat in the solar system, which explains why the stars and the moons and all the other planets and everything seems to orbit Thanks. around us. And it's like, really? And, and there was, there's even a sect of flat earthers that take it way far fringe that believe that believe that instead of being a, a heliocentric solar system, it is a earth centric system. Mm -hmm. That the sun revolves around us. And I'm just like, I'm sitting there going, which is I, I, I can debunk your entire flat earth. Yeah, I can debunk your entire flat earth argument with one statement. If the earth was truly flat, there would be nothing left on it because cats would constantly be knocking shit off. <laughs> I know, <end>. right? <laughs> Let's <laughs> say know? Arctic ice shelf is what's keeping them, so they can't actually go and push. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. Right, right yeah. The ice wall. But yet, but Going yet, we're seeing, we're seeing videos now that there's there's there there's like an ancient city under the ice in Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, huh. they were they were saying that uh, they were doing the whole uh, Savage Land uh, thing. There, there's there's dinosaurs. Well, no, they were talking about Admiral Byrd uh, and his naval expedition after World War II was over because they were trying to claim chunks of Antarctica to put military bases on. Yeah, and um, apparently his diary was confiscated. Because he put entries in there where they had made contact. They had been taken into this underground area under the ice. And it was completely, um, it, it was a, a temperate climate under the ice. Well, it was at one point when it was, what, Pangea? It was further up, like, connected right. to... Right, no, the, he said that, the, like according, to, point, according but... to Admiral Byrd, this was a, this, this, this was a temperate subtropical climate under the ice and there was a city that was very advanced and their sources what, occupied me, yeah what now? i said their sources trust me bro <laughs> yeah man. yeah right they you know i mean any actual well you know scientific source of of information. I, I'm, a, I, I'm a very god-fearing man okay however I do believe in ghosts and I do believe in UFOs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's like, well, they, they would just, they would have to look like us because God created us in our own, you know, in his own image. You know, here's my argument to that. How arrogant of a species are we to assume that we are the only form that God can take on? Yeah. 
It's, and out of the billions of planets that are out there, we're the only one that is in the Goldilocks zone. I, I, I really find that hard to. Well, they just found, it's like in Greece, so they just found in Greece a uh, tooth that's putting our uh, species a little bit further back. They found a tooth that uh, they uh, dated it back 1.5 million years. It was a huge hmm. tooth. As in, homo sapi- as in homo sapiens? Yeah. Uh, it was, I think, in Greece or in that area. Okay. And they, but nobody, nobody's talking about that shit. They're, they're, they're going off of. Uh, I love how this episode has evolved. Yes. From a psychos and sociopaths to now a what the hell. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, well, we, well, I, I, I'm doing a what the hell with a, a comedian on Sunday. So. Uh, oh, okay. we don't, we, right. we haven't, we haven't gotten our rants in, in a long while. Uh, but right, it, this is very cathartic, by the way. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, but it, it's, it's to the point to where everybody wants to believe in their own opinion as being right, no matter what it is. And, and it could be the, the fact that, uh, cats, uh, have lasers in their eyes, but you just can't see it because you don't. Do sharks have, have freaking laser beams on their heads too. No, yeah. <laughs> Johnny, stop! Stop being childish. <laughs> oh, you're right. Cats, though, they have laser eyes, and, and, they, and, they, and when they sit on your and... chest at night, they suck your soul. Right? I got you. Yeah, I've seen a movie about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was you're, that you're was taking actually... that with the with the uh, the very cheaply produced X rated porn called Cat Dancer. <laughs> and, uh, and I do believe that uh, the cat stealing, soul sucking uh, thing was actually a little goblin thing, and it was sucking the breath out. And the cat was actually the hero. And I remember that movie from that. the eighties. Yeah. And yeah. the, the reason why the cats got the bad name is because the cats knew about these goblins. And the they cat ta- tossed them. the goblin into and, the box van. Yeah, and they yeah. they defeated they defeated the, the the goblin thing that was still in the breath of the uh-huh. child. Yeah, no, I remember that movie. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, but. Now that we've completely just absolutely tossed the compass out the damn window, we should all get we should all be honorarily commissioned in the United States military as 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 officers, uh, specifically lieutenants. Well, you can't spell law. I can be a lieutenant that. because I can't do a lab now to save my life. All right, I, I can mostly. So. <laughs> I actually passed. So when we, when I tested for EIB, and this was God, twenty plus years ago. This is way back when. Uh-huh. Uh, so I, I actually I passed my nightland now. I missed my first stop, but I got my second and third one correct. And they still to this day can't figure out how I did that because you get your azimuth off your your first. So you got to get your first one right to get your correct one. So I don't know how I missed my first one, but got the second and third one correct. <laughs> did you earn your EIB? I I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I ended up. It, it hurts. Oh. I know. It hurts to admit it. What's I got be? mine. I, one I was no go. Leader. One so no go. You want to know where my one no go came from? And it was some bitch ass instru- um, um, grader at that station. It was a uh, ace report. Uh, okay. Yeah. Or no, it was, it was a salt report, right? Like, you know, they had this notional scout unit walk by and you had to call it in, right? Right. The fact that they were wearing beanie caps told me that this was a scout unit because scouts don't give a shit, right? Exactly. And so well, I called it in as a walk. scout unit. Everything else was absolutely dead on. And I was like, it's a scout unit. And he goes, stop, you are no go at this time. I was like, what? And so I was like, oh, no, I'm going to appeal this because this is bullshit, right? This is day test, testing day one. <laughs> and so we go to the NCYC of that station and he goes, he called it a scout unit. Why, why did you no go him? And he goes, because he called it a scout unit. And he goes, it's a scout unit. He goes, he doesn't know that. Like, what? Like, 
and he, and he went to go, you know, do the whiteout thing in order to just give me a new score sheet. And he was like, and the dude was being a complete horse's ass, right? It was an E6 in charge of the station and it was an E5 that gave me the no-go. And he goes, Staff Sergeant, if you, if you override that no-go, I'll have to take this to battalion. And so he was, he just looked at me and he goes, look, man, I know you want to be true blue, but dude, just, just take your no-go and just come back in five minutes and retest. I was like, can I retest now? He goes, yeah. I said, I want you to be my, my, my tester. And he goes, that's fair. So I walk over there and the staff sergeant gave me the go and he was going to, and I gave the same exact salt report. And I mean, even the guys that were in the unit that you're reporting on, they overheard the conversation. They were like, Hey, we're a scout unit. <laughs> oh, good. Nice. And then, and then, uh, night, day land navigation at Fort Campbell, dude, was a breeze. You just walked the roads, right? But then you had to bust brush at night. Yeah. And they had this one depression. I swear to God, a, a lieutenant actually got lost out there on the night course because instead of boxing around the depression, he went into it. Good Lord. <laughs> And I'm like, huh? But it was it was the it was the SF uh, it, it was the fifth group land nav course because when you get to, when you get to your point, fifty meters to either side was another point. Oh, those are the worst, right? So you're sitting there going, I hope my back azimuth is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it had you questioning your you know it had you had you questioning your entire existence. You're like. Was my pace count 68 or 67? Maybe it was 69. Uh, 69. No, it was 68. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I would be that guy that would be like every 100 meters, stop, turn and do my back azimuth. And I'm like, okay. So, I mean, but I mean, I mean, it took me like an hour and a half to do the 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 you know the five points or whatever and they gave us three hours to do it but i'm just like that's pretty quick yeah you know so i'm I'm just like you know because we were just kind of like just hauling ass you know because we went out buddy uh, buddy teams because uh, you know at night right but i don't know it was just but i'm just sitting there going like man that one no-go just ate at me like the whole time like it's fucking always, ate it's at me. always the case that that Something like that'll live rent free in your fucking head only because it's bad. Uh, it's 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 that situation. <laughs> it did, it's dude. It still situation. owns a condo up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice one. It's got, it's got the whole penthouse, it's man. Right. It's it's, it's got, got it's got a, got a beach view bar. now. I mean, they, they, I mean, they put cattle back there. <laughs> on a clear day, dude. It, uh, it, on a clear day, you can see the beach. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> did you know? This is this is something I just recent like today. I learned this today. If you have like maybe about th- three to four cattle on your land, you get you get like a, a, a homestead. It, it, is it a homestead or it, it's something to do with the you get like a, a tax relief or something like yeah that. agricultural mm-hmm. exemptions, but you got to be zoned for it, which is stupid. Yeah, but I mean I get it. Ooh, it, takes it, too, but it takes quite a bit more. Oh yeah. You know, but like places like my HOA, HOA, the HOA where I live, like no livestock. You can't have livestock. Like there's no chickens, ducks, or geese, or fucking cows, right? You can't have goats out in the backyard. Cause yeah, but they got to prove that the geese and ducks are yours. Well, they got to prove that they're, they're livestock, though, because if you call them pets, if you have them labeled as pets, it's kind of a gray area. I've seen where some of them, you can actually fight for it if you really want to. You can just call them pets but then you can't do anything even remotely agriculture related to it it's it's a weird right like oh this is my uh this is my service goose like the service i'm just service chilling doctor. i'm walking into heb with a fucking crocodile on a leash you know <laughs> i would i would do that i would i would absolutely do it. hey you know they're gonna give you a wide path. You wouldn't have to worry right. about anybody coming. Yeah, you just, you walk in with an alligator, people will leave you alone, man. Right? Nah, yeah. There's gonna be some ass. Oh, what was it? it fucking was, uh, white chick trying to fucking pet. I just want to. Justin Danger <laughs> Newman. Imagine was, having um, an alligator come in with a vest on it and everything. <laughs> yeah, Ju- Justin Danger did a TikTok. He it, it, he did a stitch with it. This dude 
was walking his goose and the goose was actually flying across yeah. this crosswalk yeah. and, and he I comes over and he goes he goes i i got nothing i literally like, i literally have nothing i i'm i don't even have a fact check i mean you you do you i'm, I'm out and then, like, how do you even train for that like that's impressive yeah, right. well, you just gotta get you just gotta like, hook it up to, to the point to where uh it's gotta just know you can like, still plot and everything like, like you, that but you like, well you gotta know what speed to, exactly it knew exactly what speed to fly it kept slack on there like it wasn't pulling it, it i wish dogs would would freaking behave that well on a leash. right i wish my Great damn dog was that smart <laughs> like, my dog I mean, David's met my dog. Like, if, I mean, he'll get to, he'll stand up on his I back like legs, they, do this little thing, right? It's a rat. And like, he gets all excited. Oh yeah, dude, he's a he's a dachshund terrier mix. It's and, a rat with good PR, <laughs> dude. He gets excited. He piddles all over the fucking place, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, why can't you be a normal dog? I'm like, I, I don't like petting you when I come home because you piss all over the place. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, and my wife, she's got one of those petite uh, Labradoodles. Oh, yeah. And this dog, I swear, la, it's, it, it, it's a great cuddler. It doesn't shed. But she's dumb as the day is long. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Does it somehow get up on the roof? You know, I, if I if if you give her the time, she would probably figure it out. Once she, or you know, I mean, it took her like it took her two days to figure out how to go up and down the stairs. <laughs> you know, I love this dog. Getting to down is easy. It's the yeah. getting up the stairs that's the hard part. Right. I mean, coming down is just grabbing. Yeah, yeah, you just fall. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not flying. I'm falling with style. You know, but. <laughs> I mean, I love this dog to death, but I'm just like, uh and then you know, and in the meantime, I'm looking at my dog, and it's like he gets all like wound up, and then he'll just throw his back legs out from underneath him, and then he'll just rub his dick on the carpet, and I'm just like, bro, what is that? What are you? T-? And he's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on here? Uh, a, all right so it it's the official second day of hot fall here in texas and my wife and her sister commemorated the event by officially putting the first pieces of fall decor in the front yard how many pumpkins two they're made out of metal Call it. right and they stick in the in the flower bed and there's a scarecrow that behind them and then they tried to take my my motion light that I used for security that I got right at the end of of the it's it's basically a spotlight an LED spotlight and it's at the end of our sidewalk coming up to the door and my mother-in-law comes in and she's like they're trying to take your light and stake it in front of that I was like it's a motion light <laughs> So I go outside. Of people that are walking by, they want to make sure that it's. <laughs> I go outside, and my wife meets me at the door, and she's like, "Mama told on us." And I'm like, "It's a motion light. It's a motion light." <laughs> like, well, we're just gonna have to get, a, get the Well, when you put that ring doorbell on, we're gonna have to move the light anyway because we won't be able to see. And I'm like, "Well, I will move it then," but. You know, I, what I'll do is I'll be that guy that takes the spotlight and puts it almost in front of the door and points it towards the street. So when you walk up to the sidewalk, up to the door, you get wow. blinded. <laughs> you know? I, can just, I can just see it now. You're like, hey, got to- oh, God. Oh, God. First thing. You know what? Do you, do you have brilliant. a moment to discuss like, Lord? Oh, <laughs> when you really get down to it, though, that's kind of brilliant, though, because, you know, that's that immediately puts them on the defensive. Yeah. There, there. It's a bad tactical position to be in. I'm. That's that's. Now, if I could just figure out a way to get Alexa to, um, sync all the lights and change colors and play, you know, drowning pool, that would be amazing. <laughs> right. You know, it's like you picked the wrong you house. Play more Roomba. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, see, I pay for the Samuel L. Jackson voice on my Alexa device, right? Even it's, better. It's, it's one dollar, dude, and then you get the clean and the explicit version. Like, hold on, let me see if I can, let's see if I can get them to, to cooperate here. Hell yeah. Hey, Alexa, have Sam Jackson tell me the weather. 
in proof it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly clear skies. Tonight, you can look for clear skies with a low of 72 degrees. By the way, there's an air quality alert in effect until Saturday, September 24, 7.15 p.m. I can even have him tell me, like, like depending on what soundbite pops up in the rotation, like, I had him ask me, I had him tell me the weather one day, he's like, Sure, I'll tell you the fucking weather. <laughs> and I'm like, it's because you too damn lazy to stick your head out the fucking window. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Worth you know? every penny. <laughs> right? Okay, like, okay, like Alexa, have Sam Jackson tell me a dirty joke. Guess what I said to a casserole when it comes out of the oven? You are done, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh man. <laughs> I, I need to get an Alexa now just because almost, I can get that. It's almost as bad as me wanting to get like I was like, hey, what are you gonna do for home security? I'm gonna build me an Ed 209. What's that? <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like Make sure I, it's I saw that I, I saw that movie. Right. I saw that movie like at you know when my parents went to go rent it from Blockbuster one night, and you know so we're where there was our family and another family were really close friends. So we did movie nights where my parents would bring their VCR over to the other house, and they would hook the VCRs up and would they would copy the movies, you know? Yeah, you know before pirating was illegal, and uh, <laughs> that was that was the one thing besides I'll buy that for a dollar that stuck out in my mind about this movie was when Ed 209 turned that first dude at the, at the unveiling into shredded beef. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm watching. sitting there going, I'm sitting, I'm like, I can't remember how old I was. I think it was like 11 or 12 and I'm sitting there watching this movie. I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> like, it's almost, as bad. Cool. It's almost as bad as uh, my mom, take my mom, my mom and dad took me to go see a, uh, uh die hard for the first time and it's the first time i actually seen boobs and i can remember <laughs> it was it was so hilarious because my mom tried it was like and my dad was like it, 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 it's like five seconds so it, it he barely even saw anything and you're doing that and he, and there's like guys getting like blown the fuck off oh yeah greatest and, christmas movie ever I will die on that hill. Greatest Christmas movie ever. Oh, yeah. Lampoon's I don't care what cake. Bruce Willis said at, at his roast. I mean, he was like, I was like, no, nah, come on. I man. still believe oh, no, it will be a movie. There's, there's a second, a close second. Do you ever see that uh, that one with Mel Gibson? Uh, fat, fat guy? Man. Uh, fat Man. Fat yeah. Man. There you fat, go. Fat oh, man. Fat Man. Dude, that was a good oh. one, too. That, yes, was, that, was, that was that was fucking phenomenal. I fucking love that movie, dude. So I, I watched that. I watched that, and a friend of mine was like, "Hey, dude, I saw on your uh, Voodoo account uh, that we share. There's a movie on there called Fat Man with Mel Gibson. Uh, and uh, yeah, what's what's that all about? I was like, dude, it's fucking it's dude, Santa Fat Claus, Man was such a good movie. Yeah, it was. I mean, awesome. I mean, it wasn't like the best in the world, but like, I'm sitting there, I'm like. Oh, this is great, Santa. Oh, it's movie it, for what it is. Oh, it's, yeah, with with the budget that it had. Oh, and then hell yeah! He shows up at that kid's house with a fucking eye patch, and he's like, "Your grandmother will not mysteriously <laughs> die either, because <laughs> we're watching you." <laughs> and he just kind of flips the eye patch up. I'm like, that is so baller. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Santa Claus is out there taking target practice with a 45. <laughs> Oh, my. oh, that is great! <laughs> I think I'm going to add that to my uh, my list of annual Christmas movies because every Christmas Eve I have to watch uh, I have to watch Die Hard. Yes, yes. So I have know. that one on Blu-ray. It's it's the, the the Fat Man. I bought it on Blu-ray because I want to be able to watch it. Anytime. Well, I bought the 4K version on Vudu, and I'm like, oh, dude, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I just I, I bought I bought Die Hard on 4K physical you know, physical uh, dri- uh, drive, but, yeah. you know, I, it always came with the digital code. And anymore, not, like, anymore now, like, I used to be big into the buying the Marvel titles when they came out, you know, I'm like, all right, great, because I wanted the entire MCU. 
but then Disney Plus, and I'm like, why? Yeah, I don't need to. I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't need it because I've got Disney Plus anymore. Because so, it's the basic. The only thing that uh, no, uh, I did I buy the last on? movie that I bought on digital was Top Gun Maverick because that that was such an excellent movie. Yeah, but well, a lot of things that we miss out on is like the commentary on the uh, movies nowadays. Yeah. Because if you go if you go out, look look at Mallrats uh, commentary. You act. There's a joke in. Uh, fuck you guys! I know you're fucking texting each other, messaging each other, and everything. Assholes. <laughs> 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 Anyways, <laughs> the the messages between these two assholes are fucking phenomenal. <sighs> anyways <laughs> there's a joke in there is uh ben affleck was the bomb and phantoms and it's in uh <laughs> <laughs> and it's in uh uh jay and silent bob strikes back phantoms was actually a great movie it was very underrated i did see it i'm like at the end of it i looked at my buddy and um Stuart halverson um, so shout out to Stewie because I know he's a friend of the page. I know he's a, a mutual friend of you and I, David, on Facebook. We watched that movie and we looked at you. We're like, Ben Affleck was the bomb in Phantom Joe. We're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Dude, one of the best commentaries was when uh, Ben Affleck did the the commentary for uh, Armageddon. Yes, because he just shit all over that movie the whole time. It was it was him just just crapping on michael bay writing, writing this shit out it's just this is the dumbest fucking thing ever this is i cannot believe that this is the only fucking plan that they would come up with and, and he's like he's like you're telling me that it's harder to learn how to drill a hole than it is to be a fucking astronaut <laughs> right you know yeah but, but at the time we're watching this movie at the ages that we're watching it you know we're young adults right we're 18, 19, 20 years old. At least I was when it came out. And we're like, this is, this is feasible. I can see this happening because I was in the army then. And it was like, it would be just like the government to be like, oh, well, we don't have time to train our own people. So we're going to go out and get somebody, you know, they're going to go out and get the right. But, <laughs> but it's believable because you have Keith David and Billy Bob Thornton. Keith David and Billy Bob Thornton that are actually selling it. It's the only reason that you can actually pull this off. You get anybody else in there, and and they, yeah, you'd laugh them out of the room. Yeah, well, it's almost <laughs> as bad as uh, the actual <clears throat> the actual first uh, <laughs> launch, where they were like, "Hey, we want a fucking a window in the ship so we can see out." And they are had talking a- about the right stuff. Yeah. That conversation actually took place between the astronauts and the German engineer or German scientists that were engineering uh-huh. Uh-huh. and designing the capsule. They were like, no window, no Buck Rogers. That line was actually set in that test hangar. Yeah. But it, it, it's so strange. It's like that's that's part of the government and everything like that. God damn you guys. <laughs> 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 what's really sad is i can't message on any of this fucking shit because my my camera is away from me and you motherfuckers are just having a day I, I can't i can't get two army guys to fucking together two infantrymen at that Exactly. <laughs> I can't get two, two guys together to where what, what, is, what, is, what, what, what is it to the point to where oh, y'all man. start acting like a fucking adults? I mean, Jesus Christ! It's been forty three years, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to fucking read this shit so everybody knows <laughs> what's going on, Johnny. Johnny and Chris are having a conversation. Okay. 
<laughs> now the cop. Right. Uh, okay. okay. Where, where let me see there? if I can do this with a straight face. Let me. Let me. No, no, no. Mic. I got no, it. No, 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 no. Let me see if I can read this in my my inner mic row here. Hold on. Just okay. A second. You have to start this with is what you were talking about when you when movie. your mom and dad took you to go see Die Hard. Yeah. I said he was trying <laughs> to think of an actual movie title. His dad actually took him to a peep show. LOL. Chris replied, and he was the star. And I replied, please, Papa, make the bad man stop. And Chris replies, bad touch, bad touch. And I replied, his fingers are too long, Papa. <laughs> Chris replies, his mustache tickles. And I reply, but Daddy, I don't like chocolate starfish. And Chris replies, it smells like bratwurst and sauerkraut. And I replied, do you have any gray poupon? <laughs> Chris replies, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. And I replied, the buns were a little hairy. And he said my feet were dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's the end of the episode we did an hour <laughs> and uh yeah yeah, yeah. kind of oh, sorry God. that i uh i met <laughs> <either> one of you <laughs> I... oh, i'm sorry <laughs> i think it was right about here on the bad chest bob in the crotch area where well, nice y'all i'll probably not ever be back on the podcast again and uh <laughs> <go> fuck <laughs> yeah so he's got the doll where 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 did you the... it was the crotch area if Chris, just fucking... in case he hasn't done it and he does decide to boot you there's my phone number <laughs> <laughs> Done and <laughs> 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 All right, guys, I'm this, out of this, here. No, this has actually been a good episode, everybody. Uh, I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And I am Chris Jacko. And this is Psychos and Sociopath. This one was a fun one. We 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 haven't been able to talk for a while or anything like that. So everybody thank you for listening thank you for enjoying the crap show that they want to pick on me today because but papa my hands were clean thank you all for listening and watching <laughs>